This is a brief command line demo for the brew2bits, so brewcard2bits function, which was introduced at greater length in a previous video summary regarding standards compliant reposting of small animal MRI data. In any case, you can just jump in. So the workflow, brew2bits, is distributed via a package called Samurai, and if you download that package, for instance, via git clone, you can already find some useful examples. So if you're on the command line, you can just navigate to wherever you happen to have cloned the package, and if you look inside of it at the top level, you will see this script, which contains a couple of examples useful not only to demonstrate the functionality of the package, but also, of course, to provide integration testing. So you can have a certain amount of reliance on the fact that they will work. So if you look at the test scripts, you'll see there's a few of them, and all of them are currently demonstrating brew2 bits. So you can just pick one, whichever one you want, and uh, look at the parameters. So you have minus O, this means the output directory, so the bits data will be generated into this directory. Minus F is the selection criterion for the functional scan, minus S the selection criterion for the structural scan, and the last directory is the directory in which from which the data is sourced. So if you look inside of it, you will notice that there are a bunch of Brooker Paravision directories inside. If you look at the output directory, you will see that it is currently non-existent. So what, you, what we can do right now is we can just execute this command and see what exactly happens. Uh, you will get a bunch of test output from NiPipe, including a couple of summaries at the beginning. So if you glance really fast at this, you will see that you got a selection of the data which it detected for the criteria which you specified. And subsequently, you have a list of nodes. This is basically information on the NiPipe workflow, what exactly it starts and what it executes. So you can just take your time. This shouldn't take long for this selection of data. You could try to look at the output just to glean more info about the workflow, but that's not really required. You saw an error, but errors are not necessarily fatal. So if something doesn't work out, it just doesn't work out for that specific uh, point in the data, but it might work out for all of the rest, which is what we're doing here. Okay, cool. So if we just navigate to the previous command, we'll see that the directory was created. It's called bits. And if we look what's inside of it via tree, to get a nicer, nicer display, you'll see a very nice organization of data, which uh, is basically what the bit standard specifies. So here you have your data ordered on the first hierarchical level by the subject, on the second hierarchical level by the session, and then by the various scan types. So if your goal was to just convert your data to nifty and also generate metadata files uh, and parse everything in a directory structure where it's easily accessible for analysis tools or just for your visual inspection, you're done, but of course you can do more. In this form, it's also very accessible to a lot of Python tools. So simply if you just have the data as nifty, you can open it as a Python NumPy array fairly easily. So you can start your Python interpreter. You can import NiBabel. You can load the image. And here you'd need the full path. That should have loaded it. And if you want to look at the data, just extract it via the getData method. And you're already done in the sense that you already have a, pa a Python NumPy array. So starting from now, you can do all sorts of matrix manipulations, whatever you want. Uh, this is, of course, not the only thing which you can do with bits formatted data. There's very many bits apps which will allow you to automatically do high-level analysis with it, including a lot of other workflows in Samurai. So that's about it, and uh, thanks for listening.